morning. We welcome you, those of you here in person and those of you who are watching online, we welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, whoever you are uh, and wherever you are worshiping from, you are welcome here at Trinity Church, and we are so glad that you've joined us for this time of worship. Over the next 45 minutes or so, we're going to continue our series called Belonging, and we're going to hear today about how Jesus the Good Shepherd calls all of us to be his sheep and to belong in, inside of his gate. And so we'll hear more about that throughout this service. Just a couple of logistical things as we get started. If you are new, whether you're new in person or if you're new online we are so glad that you are here we do ask that you take a moment if you can uh, to go to our website trinity1848.org the information is on your bulletin uh, here and then uh, there's a link there on Facebook that you can go uh, to it's our online connection card let us know who you are uh, maybe let us know where you're worshiping from you can also let us know if you want to know more about what's happening in the life of the church to join our weekly email list or even to inquire about membership so we hope that uh, during this time together that you'll take a moment to register your attendance as well a couple of logistical things that we want to let you know. Uh, first of all, inside your bulletin, and we'll, we've got a link that will be going online uh, here shortly, that um, you've got the UMW soup sale. Our United Methodist women are bringing back their soup sale. We do this twice a year, and it's been, gosh, well over a year since we've done it because of COVID. Uh, but this is just a fun thing that we always do, delicious soup. Uh, and you've got a few weeks that you can uh, uh, order yours, and so you can fill that out here, put it with your offering in the plate in the back. There's a link that you can go online and make that order as well. You can also also, um, email Lois Modell uh, if with questions about that. She's right over here uh, on how to make that order. So we do hope that you'll take advantage of that. Also want to let you know, for those of you here in person, if you're looking for a resource for your devotional life, we've got new upper rooms uh, in the back. As you're leaving, they're on your right. We've got a few large print. We've got a few regular print. Welcome you to grab one of those uh, on your way out to help with your daily devotional uh, time. We are so glad that you're here for this time of worship. Let us prepare our hearts now to worship God. Would you stand in body and spirit for our call to worship? <clears throat> Jesus, the good shepherd, calls our names to come and follow him. His voice speaking our names draws us to him. We follow without fear, for the shepherd cares for us. Our hearts rejoice, and we can place our trust in the good shepherd. Come, let us enter the gate with thanksgiving. Let us go forth confidently with songs of praise. Amen.
Our affirmation of faith can be found on page 881 for those of you here in the room. For those of you online, the words will appear on your screen. Let us affirm our faith together using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead, he ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now we invite you to take a moment to pass the peace of Christ to your neighbor. We're socially distanced, but please take a moment to welcome one another to worship. Once again, I want to welcome those of you who are worshiping with us online. We're so grateful for your presence with us. Knowing that I can look through this camera and know that you are on the other side means so much to us. Uh, do take a moment, if you haven't already, to do our online connection card. You can go back up in the Facebook uh, comments and find the link uh, to do that. But take a moment to register your attendance with us. Also, uh, go ahead and load your prayer concerns up. Our children's uh, moment is going to be here momentarily. But you can go ahead and put things that you're grateful for, uh, prayer concerns that you might have. And we'll be reading and sharing those aloud here momentarily. Again, welcome to this hour of worship. If we could make our way back to our pews, got a lively bunch in here this morning. That's wonderful. If we could begin to make our way back to our pews, we invite our children now for our children's time with Miss Dawn. How are you guys doing today? Good. Can you believe it's the last Sunday in April already? Really? Yeah, <laughs> really. We are ending our month. We've been talking about peace all month, and this week you guys are going to learn that sometimes you have to act to make peace. Do you guys know what that means, to act to make peace? Ruby? Very good. You must be a good little peacemaker, because she's right. You have to get people to kind of meet in the middle when they don't see eye to eye, right? Like, say you have some friends who are arguing over a video game. Well, this one's better than this one, right? And they're fighting. So you can be that person who maybe gets them to compromise and see that they're both great, right? Yeah. And get them to make peace with each other. Yes, Ruby. <laughs> Well, that's great. Did you help them like each other? Well, that's very good. So you've got a head start on this week's lesson. You already know what we're talking about. That's great. All right, so you guys are going to go upstairs and have some fun with Miss Megan. But before you go, can you say a prayer with me? Okay. Dear God, thank you for making peace with us so that we can make peace with others. Help us this week to be the part of the solution and help.
help our friends to all get along. In, your, in Jesus' name, amen. All right, guys, you go have fun. We'll see. Thank y'all. Hey, buddy, good to see y'all. Y'all are going to go have some fun upstairs and learn more. I see you, Sammy. I'm glad to see you, my son. He wants to make sure that I wave at him. <laughs> I didn't mention this at the beginning of the service, but I do want you to know that this is a safe zone to pull out your smartphone, to go on uh, to Facebook where our video, our live stream is going live. You can join in the comments there. That's the platform that we use to share our prayer concerns or, or things that we're grateful for. It is, I mean, th there's something lively about all of you, both in the room and online. Comments are coming in like crazy, which is great. Uh, everybody is... Um, uh, uh, commenting and loving on each other and so we're grateful for that you can join us there and let us know but go ahead and put your things that you're grateful for and uh, things that uh, you want us to pray for if you're uh, going on Facebook you can search us if you have the app or just go online uh, facebook.com backslash trinity umcsav let's see what comments we have this is something for those of you who are new that we kind of started during our live streams during the pandemic when there was no one here and it's really become a way that we connect with each other and so now that some of you're back in the room it's a way that we can connect our in-room people with our online people and be one church family together so it's really neat let's see uh renee ownby's uh thankful for all the rain last night i am too it washed our porch off y'all should have seen how yellow that porch was uh before yesterday it was terrible um but I hope the, the earth was refreshed uh, with all that rain. Um, let's see, Pasha, glad that you're worshiping with us today. Um, a few of you, by the way, who are in the room, this is uh, your first time back since all this chaos started. So welcome back. We're so glad to have you. Uh, and so glad that you're back in the room. It's fantastic uh, to return to in person uh, when you can. Let's see, uh, Connie... Uh, yes, Connie, Connie uh, thanking Molly, who's out. Uh, she's going to be back here in a week or two, I think. Uh, but they swapped backpack delivery uh, dates. And so, so glad that y'all were able to work together and get our backpacks delivered to Gadsden. Uh, like Clockwork, it's a great ministry we have that, that we are grateful for our volunteers. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Kim wants us to pray for students in the district as they push to finish the last weeks of uh, school. Yes, absolutely. Praying for teachers as well. Uh, it is it is a marathon this year, especially with all the just stuff. <laughs> it's just been chaotic. Um, let's see other things that we are grateful for. We want to pray for. Uh, yes, Mary Ellen, grateful to love this church so much uh, that it's a place to welcome friends. We are grateful for that, and we're going to talk more about that. This whole series we're doing during Easter Tide is about belonging, and so we want you to know how much you belong here. Chastity, grateful to have started a new job last week. Yes, Chastity, congratulations on that. Also, congratulations, Chastity uh, is on the... the um, uh, the Downtown Neighborhood Association Board, I saw that you were uh, elected to an office, so thank you for that service beyond your, uh, your vocational job. Uh, let's see, Ardra, welcome to First Time Visitors. We have first time visitors in the room we're grateful for, as well as uh, online, so thank you for worshiping with us today. Andrew wants prayers for big decisions on the horizon. Uh, tough trip back to Ohio, yes. Uh, glad that you'll be able to uh, join us online when you do make that trip. Um, and continue to pray for your mom uh, with her different health issues that are going on. Other things that we want to pray for. Um, Cody is thankful that Allison Morgan's beautiful baby, uh, baby girl, uh, visited with the Be the Bridge uh, 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 Zoom small group. So uh, Parker and Allison had a baby a couple weeks ago, and beauty of Zoom, right? Like your newborn baby can come to the small group. And so they got to meet um, uh, the new baby this past week. We are grateful for that and for the work that our Be the Bridge group is doing uh, around racial reconciliation. Um, Andrea, also thankful for the Be the Bridge group. That's wonderful stuff that they're doing in there. Uh, Pasha, prayers for her son Tyson, who started ooh, who started the Appalachian Trail this week. That's exciting. Uh, but certainly want to pray for safety there as well. Other things that you want to pray for this morning. I'm grateful we got our youth volunteers back here. We are teaching them how to run this live stream and uh, uh, work the slideshow and doing all the stuff. And so grateful for our youth and their learning there. Let's see. Miller, uh, granddaughter Lorelai was baptized last weekend. Congratulations. That is exciting stuff to share as a family. Other things that we want to pray for this week. I do want to continue to lift Mary Cook. Uh, Mary uh, is back in the hospital. She's just having a tough time getting her strength back. Um, uh, so I want to pray and, and lift Mary and her family in prayer. Um, 
Let's see, Cindy Bird uh, did a walk through Stations of the Cross. That's very neat. That's always a, a powerful thing to do. So glad, so glad that you got to do that, Cindy. Other things that we want to pray for. For those of you who are new, this is kind of how we do it. It's, it's the old-fashioned joys, sharing joys and concerns, but it's a neat way that we feel connected as a church family. As always, I go back and I read all of these. Um, I, I go back to the end of the service, and so you are welcome to continue commenting, continue to comment on other people's comments, uh, continue to do it while I pray, because this is a way that we can pray with our fingers, right? That we can love and care for one another uh, and care for the world around us as we do that. And so it's a neat way uh, to continue to connect. Let us go to the Lord now in prayer. Gracious God, we give thanks for this day, for the beauty of creation, for the renewal of the earth through rain. We give thanks for all the blessings in our lives. Lord, we lift to you those who are first responders, those who are essential workers, those whose lives have gotten harder through their vocations throughout this year of a global pandemic. We lift to you, O oh God, those who are in need this day, the concerns that we have mentioned and those that we have left unmentioned. We give thanks for all the joys and blessings that we have in our lives. Again, those mentioned and those left unmentioned. Lord, you are with us so closely. Your grace holds us each and every day. We cannot make it through this life on our own. We rely, depend on you. And your love is abundant. Your love is more than abundant. And we give thanks. Lord, we lift those who are leaders in our local areas, statewide, national leaders, world leaders. We lift to you those who continue to do research around COVID-19 to help us get out of this pandemic. We pray for vaccine distribution, that folks continue to get their vaccines, that we remember that we are still in this together, and that if we work together, we can come through this on the other side. Lord, we pray for the new sense of normal that's coming. We know that we cannot return to the old. Life only moves forward. And whatever the new world has for us, it continues to unfold around us. We pray for a renewed sense of your grace and mercy, for patience, for love, that we might see our neighbors as your children, made in your image, whether we always like each other or not, whether we agree with each other or not. We know that we are all your children. Lord, we lift our prayers to you in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. And in the power of your Holy Spirit, as we pray the prayer Jesus taught his disciples to pray, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever. Amen. Stand.
Our gospel lesson comes from John's gospel, the 10th chapter, beginning with the 11th verse. Hear these words. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. The hired hand is not the shepherd and does not own the sheep. So when he sees the wolf coming, he abandons the sheep and runs away. Then the wolf attacks the flock and scatters it. The man runs away because he is a hired hand and cares nothing for the sheep. I am the good shepherd. I know my sheep and my sheep know me. Just as the Father knows me and I know the Father. And I lay down my life for the sheep. I have other sheep that are not of this pen. I must bring them also. They too will listen to my voice. And there shall be one flock and one shepherd. The reason my Father loves me is that I lay down my life only to take it up again. No one takes it from me, but I lay it down on my own accord. I have authority to lay it down and authority to take it up again. This command I received from my Father. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated.
We continue our series that we have been doing since Easter called Belonging. Uh, this week we talk about the Good Shepherd. The choir just beautifully sang about the Good Shepherd. And we hear these familiar words for many of us of Jesus saying that he is the Good Shepherd. It's interesting, if you take sort of a, 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 a 5,000 foot view at this text, sort of look at more than just the few verses that, that we uh, heard this morning, this chapter 10 of John is really in response to chapter 9. Chapter 9, Jesus heals a man who had been blind, sends the man to the temple, to the religious leaders, to, to, to show himself, only for them to exclude him, to send him away, to say he's not welcome. And so Jesus, in response to that, begins to teach. Earlier, uh, pre what we read this morning in chapter 10, he says that I'm the, the, the gate. He is the one through which people can come. Religious leaders are not. And here he makes this implication, which is so powerful, that the Pharisees, the religious leaders, were more like hired hands, right? That's who he's subtly trying to teach at there. They were the hired hands. And what do hired hands do? Hired hands are only there for themselves in the end. They don't care about the sheep. Not when it gets hard. Not when it gets risky. The hired hands are really in it just for themselves. And Jesus is saying he is the good shepherd who will literally lay down his life for the sheep. Who do whatever it takes to bring the sheep in. What a powerful image this is. What a powerful image. And I thought about what does that look like in the world around us? Well, it's pretty obvious. Church can be a pretty judgy place, can it? <laughs> you don't need me to tell you that. So many of us have different stories. One of the, 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 it's just heartbreaking sometimes as a pastor is to hear your stories where you've been excluded, where you felt left out, where you felt judged, where you felt someone didn't want you in the church for whatever reason it may be, the color of your skin, it could be your background, it could be who you, who you choose to love in life. I mean, it doesn't matter. There's many different reasons why people are excluded. Church can be one of the most exclusive places around. Too often in church, our sense of belonging is meant for insiders only a story I think I've probably told a couple of times but it's just become foundational for me and my life of ministry uh, a couple years ago because we didn't have it this past fall we, we um, uh, took part in the pride parade pride weekend really it was a parade on Friday and it was a whole day on Saturday and we had volunteers down there and we were giving out stuff for advertiser church it was great uh, but we did the parade and we had this banner that a group of us were carrying through the parade and it was so great it, it, uh, um, God loves all y'all and so do a bunch of Methodists that's what the banner said and we marched through downtown Savannah we just had a good time and there towards the end of the parade I'll never forget it a drag queen comes up to me and I'm thinking, I mean, I'm open and inclusive and everything, but I'm thinking, what is a drag queen coming up to, I mean, obviously coming to talk to me, like, what do they want from me? And they come up to me with tears in their eyes to say, I used to be Methodist. And I stopped going to church because they didn't want me. Now, on the one hand, I was proud, right? Because, you know, this person felt like they could connect to church in that moment again, but then it was heartbreaking to think about that somebody somewhere in some church along the way told this person, made in the image of God, that somehow they didn't belong. Too often our churches are run by hired hands. They don't care enough about the sheep, or at least all of the sheep, but not the good shepherd. I think there are three moments of gospel in this text today. The first is that, that moment, I hope you caught it, where Jesus said, I have sheep not of this fold, but they're going to come too. It's powerful. Because it tells us that Jesus is never not trying to reach new people. And sometimes the people that he's going after could even be beyond our imagination. But it's that reminder that there's always room, always, for someone new. That's powerful stuff that the Good Shepherd is always searching for people. You know, elsewhere in Luke's gospel, we hear the story about how, how the shepherd loses the sheep, has 99, and one gets away. And most of us would say, well, you still have 99, that's pretty good. But he says, no, no, we'll do it, whatever it takes to get that one back. There are sheep not of this fold, and they're going to come too. Good shepherd says so. I think the second point of gospel is in Jesus' promise that he'll do whatever it takes, even lay down his life for the sake of the sheep. That whatever it takes in your life, the shepherd loves you beyond comprehension. 
I mean, you think about the people in your life that you would lay down your life for, right? And most all of us have at least somebody we would lay down our life for. It could be a spouse, it could be your children, it could be your grandchildren, whoever it is. You take that amount of love that you have for that person, and then you multiply it beyond comprehension. And that's the love of God for you. That the good shepherd will lay down his life for you. I think the third point of gospel may be one of the more powerful ones of all. Earlier, remember we mentioned that Jesus said he's the gate, right? He's the one through which people can come. Which is to say, guess what? The sheep don't get to decide who comes in. The shepherd does. That's the problem we run into in church is that we all forget that we're all sheep. And somehow or another, we, we, we morph that being sheep and we confuse ourselves with being hired hands and we get to oversee the life of the church. We get to watch over and make sure that our church remains the church that we want it to be. We don't get to decide who comes in the gate. That's the good shepherd's job. And the size of that gate, oh, it's huge. We know because it welcomed even us. And if it welcomed even us, then surely it can welcome others. So what does this mean in our life? I think there are three things it can mean for us as well. One is what we just said. If the gate's big enough for us to come in as sheep, then we need to be risky in our sense of belonging. Dietrich Bonhoeffer said we can get in trouble because in striving to do good, we can actually not do God's will. Which is to say that we, can, we strive to be polite, we strive to fit in, we strive to do what's socially correct and all that, and somehow or another we can miss doing the will of God. And in this case it means being risky and extravagant with our sense of welcome and belonging. I like to think that we welcome new and different people. It stretches our sense of belonging, right? That our sense of belonging can become wider and greater still when new and different people are welcomed in. We need to be risky in our sense of belonging. Another thing that we can do is remember that we are the sheep, not the hired hands. That's the Pharisees. Pope Francis has this thing. He talks about uh, uh, pastors and bishops who oversee versus keeping watch. It's really powerful. Because that's, we need, need to make sure that we don't confuse the two things. To oversee something is to have a sense of superiority. To be over something. To watch over it and, 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 and to, see that, to, to oversee that we make sure things remain orderly, right? But shepherds don't do that. Shepherds keep watch. And there's a difference. Because to keep watch is to be vigilant. To be faithful. To love the sheep enough that you keep watch at all hours. That you make sure everyone remains safe. That you make sure nobody gets lost or hurt along the way. And maybe if we can learn to keep watch over our church family, then we can reflect the hope that is found in the abundant life that the Good Shepherd promises. A hope that's extended to all sorts of sheep, of all shades of colors and different uh, 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 characteristics. That we keep watch, which just means that we always keep the door open for more people. It's powerful stuff. The third thing that we can do in our lives, I love this analogy. Writer Evelyn Underhill says that we can actually, that we're actually called to be sheepdogs for the Good Shepherd. Have you ever seen sheepdog in action? Sheepdogs are amazing creatures. You know, they, they, they are hyper vigilant, right? They are faithful to the shepherd. Whatever the shepherd needs, that, that sheepdog is going to go do it. That sheepdog is an extension of the love of the shepherd, extending the work of the shepherd. Evelyn Underhill says that we are called to be sheepdogs for the Good Shepherd. To always be out reflecting hope. To always be out welcoming. To always be out extending hope and healing for those who may feel broken in this life. To let them know that even if they're sheep from a different flock, there is one flock, as Jesus said, and one shepherd. And all are welcome here. There are many voices in your life. There are many voices that you've heard throughout your life that have maybe defined you mistakenly. There are voices that have told you that, that mistakes or, or, or characteristics that are beyond your control or whatever it may be, that those things define you in this negative light. And I want you to know that the voice of the Good Shepherd speaks otherwise. That there is a shepherd who speaks a different kind of voice into your life 
to say whatever it is that you think makes you broken, whatever it is that you think makes you not welcome, whatever it is that makes you think that you're not worthy of love, it's not true. It's not true. The good shepherd loves you. I don't care who you are, where you've been, what you've done. You are loved. This is a voice that speaks life into your soul. A voice that says you were made for a purpose. That you were made in love. That you are made in the image of a good and a loving God who will literally stop at nothing to love you. We belong because the shepherd calls us. May we extend that belonging in every facet of our lives. May we be good sheepdogs, faithful always to the good shepherd. Amen. We come now to worship God with the giving of our tithes and offerings. For those of you in the room, we've got bulletins a little different. We've expanded some things. I hope you've taken time to read through it as we slowly come back to in-person things. Our bulletin is growing. There on the front of the bulletin uh, is all of the information about giving. You can take your smartphone, scan your QR code there. You can uh, see our Venmo handle. You can text to give. Uh, you can do that. If you've brought a physical offering, those are welcome too, trust me. Uh, we have two offering plates, one in the back on the table here and one in the back over there. You're welcome during the offertory to uh, drop your cash or check in the plate or on your way out today, uh, whichever is easiest for you. For those of you online, uh, you'll see links coming across the screen and appearing in the comments section. You can give online in all of those ways. Uh, Venmo, you can do uh, text to give and you can go straight to our website to give. I always remind you this, but I really do mean it. It is because of your response to God's love that your generosity is what makes the sense of belonging at Trinity Church continue to grow. And we are so grateful that you respond to God's love with being so generous. So thank you in advance for your generosity. Let us pray. Gracious God, every good and perfect gift comes from you. And so we offer our gifts back to you with glad and generous hearts. May you bless them and use them for the sake of your ever-expanding kingdom. Amen.
are welcome to respond to this time of worship together in a number of ways. You can do our online connection card, uh, ask to join our weekly email list. You can inquire about membership. If you feel like God is calling you to take that next step in your faith journey, uh, you can do that. You can also email me directly, ben at trinity1848.org. If you are interested in membership and to know about taking those next steps, I would love to have that conversation with you. We are welcoming people both in person and online. And so uh, if you are in person and would like to join the church, you can come down during our closing hymn and we will welcome you in membership or we can set that up for a future Sunday. If you're online, uh, we can have that conversation. We'll tape a Zoom call and have you join online as well. But know that you belong. You belong here at Trinity Church, and we are so grateful for you. Let us sing now our closing Reminder, we use this time of uh, the organ post salute to center ourselves for just a few more moments before we we re-enter the world uh, filled with God's mercy. And so we invite you to take these moments to center yourself uh, before you return back into your daily lives. Uh, When the music is over, you're welcome to stand and exit at that time. Receive now this benediction. Go forth from this place in God's love. Go forth that you may stretch a sense of belonging beyond your imagination. Go forth knowing that because you were loved, so greatly you can love others. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.
Hey, thanks for joining us for this live stream worship experience. We hope that it was a meaningful experience for you. If you would like to know more about what's happening in the life of Trinity Church, or if you'd like to connect with us, uh, maybe through membership or how to grow in your faith, go to trinity1848.org and you can explore our website, fill out our online connection card. Most of all, we look forward to seeing you again soon for our worship online or in person here at Trinity Church.